When I was seven years old, my parents purchased a department store telescope for my birthday. We made the long trek out to our driveway, and I peered through it. And I looked up at the moon, and I saw that distant object that has filled so many with awe before. I thought of the manned missions that must be taking place, astronauts walking the lunar surface. I was devastated when I found out there are no more moon missions. NASA, the government agency that pioneered the Apollo space program and American space travel, hasn't sent an astronaut to the moon since 1972. NASA, moon landings, telescopes, what do you think of when I say these words? Do you think of the possibilities of NASA, like sending humans to Mars, or even around another star? These are possibilities, but there's a chance it may never happen. Why? NASA does not receive adequate funding to accomplish these goals. Our nation has chosen to neglect the benefits of space exploration. Right now, NASA receives about half of 1% of the annual US budget. To put that into perspective, the US military receives about 54% of the annual US budget. With the cost of the Navy's newest aircraft carrier around $13 billion, NASA could have built and launched 52 Voyager 1 probes, 23 Mariner 10 probes, 28 space shuttles, and eight Hubble Space Telescopes. NASA can do a lot more with a little more funding. For example, with more funding, the International Space Station could have been at least twice as large, capable of supporting more scientists, more cargo, ultimately leading to more discoveries. Space exploration projects like probes and telescopes could be finished in less than half the time they are now. With more funding, we could put humans on another planet within our lifetimes. There was a time when NASA did have, have, have adequate funding. During the Apollo space program, NASA received 4% of the annual US budget. And with 4% of the annual US budget, NASA put six manned missions on the lunar surface. 12 men walked the moon, the same moon we look up and see at night, the same moon that's 250,000 miles away, had 12 men walk on it with 4% of the annual US budget. However, after the fall of the Soviet Union, NASA funds began to drop drastically. And that's because we lost interest in NASA. During the Apollo space program, we had visions of astronaut men and women walking on distant moons, mining asteroids for minerals, and even the idea of settling another planet. However, when the public became uninterested in NASA, it moved to the back burner in both the politicians and the public's mind. Politicians had no incentive to campaign for increased funding for NASA. Therefore, NASA loses funding. So why should you be interested in NASA? What are they doing now? First of all, NASA protects Earth. NASA releases data on climate change every single year that helps us make decisions based on the future. And we can look at these data that's available to the public and make plans for how we can counteract the climate change. NASA has also mapped over 1,400 asteroids that have the potential of hitting Earth and has plans in place to intercept these asteroids should they ever pose a threat. So what? NASA protects Earth. Why do we need the telescopes? Why should we go to the moon again? Mars? Well, NASA has a profound ultimate goal, and that goal is to enable humans to live elsewhere besides Earth. Whether that be the moon, Mars, or Venus, if we can spread out around the cosmos, we ensure our chances of survival. Nuclear strikes, imminent asteroid collisions, and nuclear war aren't science fiction. These are real risks. There's a common saying, never put all your eggs in the same basket. I say, don't put all your humans on one planet. <laughs> of course, this isn't something that happens right away. But it is possible within the next century if it wasn't for one limiting factor, funding. I want to emphasize that the greatest risk to us becoming an interstellar and interplanetary species is a lack of funding brought on by a lack of interest. 
We don't need smarter engineers or physicists. What we really need is your interest in NASA and its capabilities. Classical scientists like Galileo and Copernicus laid the groundwork for our observation and understanding of our universe. Later generations laid the groundwork for exploration and exploring the solar system. And now, it's our turn to lay the groundwork for the settlement of our solar system and our galaxy. So, I challenge you, you, all of you, reach out to your representative. Get interested in the cosmos we live in right now.